Hey guys, today I'm going to be covering the most highly requested fly that I've received, Phil Bear's Mother Shucker. If you have not tried this fly on your own, you need to tie this fly, you need to put it in your box, you need to fish it. I fish this pretty much late winter all the way through early spring. Anytime I see midges coming off the water, if you see foam lines in the river, throw this little mother shucker right along that foam line and start whacking fish. Phil Bear, thank you for an awesome fly. Okay, so we're gonna be covering the mother shucker. This is by far the most requested dry fly I have ever received. Um, and it's really simple. And I don't believe there's any tutorials out there on how to tie this. So this may be the very first one. So here we go. First thing you're going to need is just a standard dry fly hook. Um, this is a TMC 100 in a size 20. I recommend tying this fly size 20, 22, and 24. I really like tying it in a size 26, although I take a few shortcuts to make it a little bit easier to tie in all the materials. Next up, you're going to need a fine thread. Uh, match the thread with the color of foam you decide to go with. Right here, I've got the Semperfly Nano Silk, and this is the 30D or 18 aught, so very fine. One little thing about this thread, though, is while you're working with foam, it does have a tendency to cut through foam if you crank down too tight. So I'll show you some tips and tricks along the way. Next up, razor foam. I like gray, black, brown, and olive for these mother shuckers. So it's just a one millimeter or one, or sorry, one millimeter or 0.5 millimeter um, foam in the package. And what we'll do is we're gonna cut a strip of that off so that it is roughly the width of the gape of the hook. Okay, besides that, you're gonna need a little bit of hackle. You'll need some monofilament. Um, for smaller sizes, I'd recommend going with like 6X or 7X monofilament. Um, that's pretty much all there is to this fly. So let's just jump right in, let's get going. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start my thread on my hook and I'm going to try and start it right at about the 70% point. Just get a few wraps and you'll notice with this uh, nano silk that it kind of wants to come off of the hook when you're starting your thread. So just make sure you get a few real good securing wraps done. We're going to trim the tag off. We're going to wrap on back to point where the barb is. We're going to let it hang. We're going to take our strip of razor foam here. I've got the one millimeter size for the size 20 and I'm going to measure one shank length. I've got my tie-in point here. I'm going to go ahead and move that on back and I like to hold this on one side of the hook as I secure this on top. You'll notice with my first securing thread wrap Second wrap, you'll see that kind of orient itself upright. Just two or three turns of thread to get that secured. I will trim this into like an arrow point, but I'll do that towards the end. Um, next thing we're going to do is we're going to create a segmented body on the way up the hook shank. So to do that, I'm going to pull this foam back so it's important to have enough foam to pull back. We're just going to do one, two, three, maybe four wraps on a size 20 forward. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pull this pretty tight because I want this to be kind of tapered. Okay, one secure thread wrap, two secure thread wraps. Repeat the process, two, three, four. I'm not going to pull quite as tight this time, but I'm still going to pull. One, two securing thread wraps, one, two, three. I'm gonna do four more wraps up the shank. I am not going to pull my foam at all. I'm gonna go ahead and just let it be loose and I'm gonna secure that in. So as you can see here, and I'll go ahead and tilt this, we've got a segmented body. Beautiful. Let's tie our foam off. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this not too tight, but just a, tight enough to kind of pull that forward a little bit. And we're gonna wrap forward and about an eye length behind the eye is where I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna come in here, pull this up and trim. Beautiful, we're almost done. It's really very simple. Um, at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and come in here and just get this trimmed at a little bit of an arrow point. So that's what your shock should look like. How beautiful. Next step. Um, really simple technique for doing a hackle stacker, which is what this fly calls for. You're gonna take your monofilament, and I'm gonna take a pretty small section here, maybe like three, four inches. And then I'm going to fold this over into a loop. Now I'm going to align the tips and it does help if you give it a little snip snip to get them even. And right where my thread is, I'm gonna go ahead and get those secured in on the top of the hook shank. And I'm just gonna kind of pull back a little bit so that I don't have any of that monofilament hanging over the eye of the hook. And I'm gonna secure that all the way back to my foam. And I'm gonna just build up a very slight body. You don't need a ton. This is nano silk. So again, if you're using like 70 denier, um, like UTC thread, maybe only a few thread wraps um, just to get a small body base going. Okay, next thing I am going to do here is I'm going to take some hackle. This is already sized for a size 20. It's actually a little oversized. I like doing my hackle stackers just a little on the oversized, just to give it a good profile on the top of the water. And I'm going to peel back so that I have about two times the length of a bare stem as I have to tie this in. And I'm going to go ahead and tie this in with that dual, that dull side facing upright. And I'm just gonna secure that right there. And I'm gonna wrap that forward and back a few times just to make sure that my monofilament and my hackle is in tight. Okay, now I'm gonna come forward and I'm going to let that rest about an eye length again behind the eye. So for the hackle stacker method, I'm going to take my monofilament in one finger and I'm just gonna hold it upright. I'm going to take my feather I'm going to alternate hands here and try and keep out of the way. And I'm gonna just do a few wrapping turns up my monofilament, keeping my finger in that loop and keeping everything nice and tight. You're gonna to wanna to wrap up the monofilament about the length of the body that you have remaining. And then you're gonna wrap down through that hackle. This gets you a nice thick hackle. It's very durable and it's going to look awesome. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm actually just gonna pull all of these back and I'll go ahead and secure, sorry, I actually wrapped this forward too early. I'm gonna wrap that back there to the point where I need to tie in this hackle and we'll just secure that hackle. A few turns will do. Come in here with a pair of fine scissors. I really like Loon razor scissors. Very fine point. And we're just gonna snip that out of the way. 
Okay, ready for the magic? Pull up on your monofilament loop, bring your fibers back, pull that monofilament down. My apologies, make sure my thread's in the right place. Pull that monofilament down. Secure the monofilament right behind the eye. And it's okay if it's a little loose at first. Just get a few securing thread wraps. Pull on your thread down as you pull that loop forward to tighten that hackle. So now it's nice and tight and upright. I'm just gonna keep my fibers out of the way as I do a few more secure thread wraps on that monofilament. Come on, there we go. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and snip away my monofilament. and whip finish. And it definitely does help if you keep these hackle fibers up and out of the way. Four turn whip finish should do the trick. Trim your thread off. And I give you the mother shucker. This is an excellent fly for fishing any tailwater where they have midges hatching. Honestly, one of my most productive flies throughout the winter and early spring. Fish them along foam lines and catch lots of fish. Thanks for watching.